Welcome or welcome back. Today we are back here with Chris Jr.'s 1982 Ford Mustang GT, which, well, I won't say what we affectionately call it. I don't think he likes the car's nickname, do you, buddy? We're back here with Jr.'s car again because the driver's side brake decided to eject yesterday. It ejected itself. Apparently that is an option on this vehicle, self-ejecting brake pads. We were just driving along, we went to slow in traffic, and we heard a loud pop and the brake pedal went to the floor, and uh, we couldn't stop. So after pumping it up for a little while, we got a little more brake pressure, but all it was was this riding on the outside of the rotor. Uh, the brake pad was gone. The passenger side attempted the same thing, my guess is because of how much strain it was under working alone. You can see it's kind of chewed up. Um, and the bracket bent. These brake pads, the only thing they have to hold them in place are these little bitty tiny studs or nipples and they don't do a great job and if those aren't doing their job then it's left on that bracket and those brackets aren't very strong. I mean, You can just bend them. This happened once before in the past. We racked it up to just being an old set of faulty brake pads or even our new brake it did it with our new brake pads we thought it was a faulty set of brake pads however this time I'm unable to compress this caliper completely um, so my guess is this caliper is frozen and it tried to stop the car and then it stopped and the brake pad caught on the rotor spinning and it shot itself out I'm not playing around with this thing anymore we have an all-new master cylinder We've got all new brake lines, we've got all new calipers, all new pads, and we're going to replace everything from the engine bay down, um, hoping and praying we don't snap off these brake lines. All new fluid, everything. So hopefully that's going to solve our problem. But we're going to get started. You excited about this, Chris? Did you have fun yesterday? No. Neither one of us are overly excited to be doing this. I'm supposed to be working on my car, white trash. I've got all sorts of stuff for it. And that's what I was hoping to do, but uh, this is sort of a life and death emergency. As in, it almost killed us and we need to fix it. So we're gonna get started. We've already run into a problem. This is just rounding and stripping out. Cannot get the brake line disconnected from the other brake line. We got the caliper off just fine. The old caliper popped right off instantly. No problem. I'm kind of thinking this brake line might be a little swollen. It is not dripping all that quickly. Even though we put new brake fluid in here a while back, it looks pretty rough. I'm guessing that's from the inside of the caliper and the inside of these old brake lines. But... I am worried about whether or not we're going to be able to get these brake lines off. As slow as it was dripping a little bit ago, I kind of think these are swollen and maybe aren't transmitting much fluid. Junior got this caliper free and we'll try that brake line here in a minute and I'm moving on to the master cylinder. Alright, the old master cylinder popped off there without any issue at all. Um, it appears that it had been leaking out the back for a little while because that did not look like that last year. So it's a lot of rust and a lot of corrosion in a short period of time. We're going to try to clean that up a little, maybe hit it with some rust reformer if we've got any. Luckily the lines just popped right off without issue. All right, I'm going to teach Junior how to bench bleed this thing. I'm used to the bench bleed sets that have the the hoses that come out and come around back into the into the tanks and you pump it uh, using the hoses this one says you fill up these tanks until it starts dripping out here plug it up with these blocks and then bench bleed it so we're going to do what it says go ahead yeah, really lean into it there we go got some bubbles we're only getting bubbles out of the rear right now for some reason
Give it a couple more seconds in between strokes. Hmm. It is a little concerning that there's no bubbles at all coming out of the front. All right, I'm not really sure what's going on with this thing. Um, we've been pumping this a very, very long time. We've gotten zero air out of the rear, and it just keeps spitting out air out of the front. And now we've got some debris of something from inside the master cylinder. This thing just keeps burping air repeatedly. It looks like there's contaminants in it. So we're going to have to change that out, but can't get it to stop. Can't get that to stop burping. So we're going to move on, try to get those brake lines off and come back to this. It has been a while. We cannot get either brake line off. Both of these brake lines are just rounding. The wrenches are just turning on them and it's obvious they're going to snap. We are going to snap this off if we continue. So the only thing we can do is we're just going to hope and pray that these brake lines are in decent condition internally and we're going to replace everything else and we're going to move on until the day comes when we can replace all the brake lines front to back, replace the hard lines. We're just going to have to leave it. This is rounding. This is coming apart. This is all just corroded together and there is no separating them. So we don't have a choice for now. We just got to hope this works. Here's the new versus the old caliper. We're going to get these on, go back to addressing the master cylinder, and then hopefully get this back together. Hope for the best. I posted this issue to some Facebook groups about Fords and Fox bodies, and people were saying it's my fault because we did not have the nipples seated properly, the, the post or the nipples seated in here properly. And that's why the brake pads are ejecting themselves. As you can see, these are firmly seated and the nipples are in place. So we always do that. The brake pads are always very secure when we put this together and we're still having that issue. Hopefully these new calipers will fix that. All right, this line is on and installed and Junior is doing the other one right now. I'm gonna go check on him, make sure everything's installed nice and tight and properly. Make sure that, oh, those are a little yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. So scoot it, scoot it up some. All right, we got that one squared away. He's putting the internal brake pad back on and we're gonna get this thing mounted. All right. Now back to that master cylinder. Don't know what's going on with this master cylinder. We really got no air out of the front brakes and the rear just continues to bleed air. I don't know if the little plug on the side is leaking or what and just keeps sucking in more air. We're gonna put it on the car and try to bleed it on the car and see how it goes. Master cylinder is installed. We're finishing up installation. Um, one little thing I'm worried about is that front front line, which is the rear brakes, did not thread in very far before it bottomed out. So we have to keep an eye on it for leaks. All right, we bled them both sides till all the air comes out. Pump the brakes. The calipers are working. No more air. The fluid is clear. We got a ton of old nasty brake fluid out, but I still don't like the way the pedal feels. It just feels off. I don't know what's going on with it. No leaks down here on the caliper or the lines. No leaks up at the new master cylinder. Pump the brakes. Calipers are functioning. Guess we'll move on and bleed the rears and see how it feels. 
We definitely have brakes. I just don't like the way the pedal feels. It may just be me being paranoid, but I'm not ready to put this thing down on the ground yet and chance it. Uh, they're, they're feeling a little better. Maybe they just feel different because they weren't functioning properly before. All right, Junior's reinstalling our front tires. We're going to lower the front end, jack up the rear, bleed the rear, and see how it feels. Curiosity's gotten the best of me. We're going to take it up and down the street real quick, 10, 15 miles per hour, and just see if the brakes work. taking it five miles per hour at a time. Well, we've moved on to the back. Unfortunately, we cannot get the bleeder screws off. Uh, we can't bleed the rear brakes. It is just spinning and turning. I have what I believe to be the proper replacement here. If I can get it off, we're gonna try some vice grips and see if we can just force it open. Uh, we're having fun, aren't we? No, not really. Look at the nastiness that came out of the passenger side. I didn't realize our little container has a crack in it here. Look how disgusting that is. We are finally back to the point of nice, clean brake fluid with no air bubbles coming out the passenger side. Now I gotta move on to the driver. Little side note, the car is sounding amazing. Running rich and fat as can be, but sounds amazing. This is beyond bizarre. In the middle is the brake bleeder I took off. On the left is the one that appears to be identical to it, but it will not fit in the, the spot. It will not thread in the head if it's too big. On the right is the little bitty tiny one that does fit somehow. I don't understand it, but the replacement for the one in the middle is the teeny tiny one on the right, not the one on the left that appears identical. Pump the brakes two times. Damn it. I don't know what is going on. I bled the rears. The rears look amazing. Nice clean fluid coming out of them now. But we're still getting air up through the front of the master cylinder on the rears. And I don't know why I took this off again. I bench, bench bled it again. I don't know if this thing is faulty or not. We're gonna put it together and see if it'll go drive and see how it does and check for leaks. Not sure what's up with that master cylinder. It's been a while since I've bench bled a master cylinder, but I don't remember it continuing to bubble like that. And we tried it hundreds and hundreds of times and it just keeps bubbling the rears. The front seemed fine. Junior's putting the wheels back on right now. Uh, I've checked all the fittings for leaks. We don't have any brake leaks right now. We're gonna go out and see how it feels. Hope for the best. All right. Cars back together, can't find any leaks. I'm gonna test drive this thing alone. I'm gonna leave the kids here. I don't want them getting in a wreck if I screwed something up. I mean, pulling out of the driveway, it feels good so far, but that doesn't mean anything. The other brakes felt great until they popped. like his 
going to stop us on this giant hill. That's a good sign. Once again, I'm taking this in increments of 10 miles per hour with no other traffic around. All right, that's not great. It's not horrible. That was 40 miles per hour. I'm not sure if I'm just being paranoid. breaking in or what they just feel soft and squishy so far they're stopping they're stopping in a straight line but I don't know they don't feel right to me maybe I may just really be paranoid after what happened 60 miles per hour no traffic behind me uh, that is not great but it's better than yesterday they're just massive amounts of traffic right now I just got out real quick and checked I can't see anything leaking dripping anything um, master cylinder still completely full it doesn't appear to be leaking so I'm gonna go out and test it a little more all right I cannot get an opening out of traffic so I'm gonna pull over on the shoulder and just see if I can come to a stop yeah it's not horrible not great but not horrible all right there's no one behind me we're going to do a 65 to 0 test. 3, 2, 1, go! Well, I mean, they're working. We do not have anti-lock brakes, so I guess that'll do. The right side is regularly locking up. We have about 3 quarters braking. I don't like that. The left isn't, the right is. I'm going to pull some stuff apart and just look at it see what's going on drove the car quite a bit a lot more than you see on video did a lot of brake tests front right is still locking up I mean it they they used to both lock up just the front's locking the left isn't I'm not sure what's up uh, both canisters of the caliper are completely full I just checked the brake rotor the little nipples or or pegs or whatever on both sides are both seated still um, I crawled up under every tire and I don't see any leaks anywhere. Future Chris here. I thought I'd interject real quick and mention that I believe this entire job was $200 um, with all parts included, including the two brake lines we did not use or were not able to use. Um, of course, you'll need two calipers, two brake lines, one set of brakes, pads, and uh, one master cylinder. It's all local auto parts, Chineseium junk, but for a 1982 Mustang, that's all you're going to find. That's all I could find anywhere. It was all the same stuff, no matter where I looked. So here's a quick parts list and show you what we used. All right, hopefully that is it for today and for a while. Um, this video was supposed to be us changing out the shocks and the rear springs in the suspension nightmare part two from a couple of weeks ago from part one but that that didn't happen because we tried to go out and enjoy this car for a little bit for a day without working on it it didn't go well so um hopefully this will be the last we work on this for a little bit i am desperately trying to get back to white trash i'm desperately trying to get it moving and rolling and everything get it in a position where i can get the engine in it but Things keep going wrong with this thing. We just keep coming back to this thing. But uh, it's earning its namesake. What was its What was its nickname again, buddy? Was it? What was it? I can't hear you. Piece of Sting. Piece of Sting, the P.O.S. And it's still younger than you. Shut up, boy. Anyway, hopefully that's the last time you see us out here in the driveway in the 105 degree Texas heat. 
uh, working on this car. We're going to put off the rear suspension for a while. It's riding fine. It's it's riding like it's always ridden. You know, we're, we're not even going to mess with it for a little bit. It is hot. It is baking and dehydrating hot. Hopefully, we're going to be in the garage, which is only like 92 degrees. Hopefully, we're going to be doing that coming up. And uh, the next time you see us, we'll be working on white trash. Thanks for watching. We hated it. Bye.